Okay, so uh, the new ride is a 2019 4x4 Rancher. It has a foot shift, not the electric shift. And the reason why is because I've seen the solenoid sometimes mess up if something gets grounded out and then you get on the trail, you got to limp it back. So I bought a foot shift. Um, so the thing is, when you buy these, the Foreman and the Rubicon models uh, that I've seen in the store, they have a plug here from factory. Well, this one doesn't have a plug. So if I get a flat out on a trail, I have to rely on somebody else in order to help get me home. So what I've done is I've done my deal, due diligence, done my research, and so what I figured out is, if you look on this, there's a plug right, there's a, a plate right here in the front, I'm sorry, it's back. It's sitting there like this, you pop this off, it not only gives you access to your fluid that runs in here, uh, and your coolant to fill it up, there's also a plug that sits right here, which I've already removed this cover off of. So what happens is, this cover right here actually is on here, from factory and just to keep water and things from getting inside this plug and the reason why after checking with a, a voltage meter this plug actually has 12 volt and a ground power source and it already has its own fuse which is good uh, now in order to run this adapter which i bought off ebay for nine or ten bucks it comes with the wiring the wiring however that i have here is not quite long enough to run all the way to the back, though it seems to be pretty good. So I got inline fuse in it right here. So it'll be, I guess, overkill, but it'll be fused on this wire. And it also be fused for running through this connector, which I'm going to, it'll be fused here. So the only thing I, I want to do is uh, want to tell you that. So benefits, if you run, I, now I could splice this up and run this back here to the batter. The battery on this thing is located all the way back there. Now I can splice that in and run it into the battery, be no problem. I could use things when the key is actually uh, turned off. I'll still have power going to my 12 volt source here. However, I'm not going to do that for the simple fact. It'll give me a good coverage in case there's a, a double coverage, in case there's a ground. So assuming there's an engine ground on this somewhere, you know, in due time. Uh, I can turn the key off and I lose power to this and I don't have to worry about whatever might be plugged into this, which in my case, I'm just going to use maybe a phone charger um, if I'm out for a really long time on the trail or um, to uh, air up a tire. But either which way, you know, I have me double, double coverage on this. So I don't have to worry about sh if it shortens out. Uh, it's not running straight to the battery. I don't have to worry about trying to rush and get to the, the battery, get the, actually unhook the battery, get to it. Um, I guess one of the other benefits to be if you run this thing straight in uh, straight this plug right here If you actually run this plug to the battery and you want to sit and listen to the radio And you don't want to turn the key on and power all the other things on that goes with the key Then you might want to consider that be the which way um, This kit was really good. I'll try to find me a, a link to it and I'll put it in the description below seems to uh, be made pretty well I did uh, measure this with a dial, um, a dial uh, caliber. So the distance on each side that I have to drill this hole right here for is an inch and one sixteenth. I don't know if it's listed on the product description or not, but either which way I checked it, an inch and one sixteenth. This is a marina plug too, which means marina, marine grade does not mean waterproof, means water resistant. So I can put this cap over it and it'll seal it once it goes on, I worry about water and stuff getting in it. It's a rubber cap. Another reason why I bought this, I'm going to put that hole in there and slide it in there. When I do, you just use this right here and just tighten it up. And then once I tighten it all the way up against that, I have to worry about it wiggling around and wiggling loose. But I'm also, I think what I'll end up doing is, which you guys will see, I think I might put some Teflon tape. Be the which way, I'm kind of rambling, so let me get to it. So, uh, I've previously seen in a video that this front plug right here, sorry, my hand's in the way. This front plug right here, has uh, one keyed power source on it and it has one power source on it that is um, a little left for some reason. So after checking this with a, a gauge, with a um, um, diagonal voltage meter, sorry, sorry, lost the words there. So after checking this voltage meter, you have a white to orange, a green, and then you have like a reddish looking one. It's, yeah, it's red. So you have a white with an orange stripe, a solid white one, a white with an orange stripe, a solid white one, a green one, and a red one. So what I've come to find out is the white one has key power, 12 volts, 
and it works with the engine. This will be good if you want to install something, make sure your charging system is working. They make little USB dongles you can plug in that'll tell you voltage. So that one, and this one works the ground. Now I did notice that the plug to the right, I believe it's the red one, for some reason it only gets like 0.21 volts of, of power. It barely lights this, this gauge up and I'll show you. So the key on, see the gauge is on. The key on, when I push, when I push this thing on here together with this white wire, lights up. Key on. Now when I turn the key off, the light goes off. No light. So that tells me that's key power. Turn it on. Power. Now the other wire is telling you about for some reason, it comes on, but as you can see by this light, it's really, really dim. So it is wired to the key. I'm not really sure what it's for. It is wired to the key, but like I said, it only gets, mine only got like 2.21, and even when it started, the voltage on it does not go up. I'm not really for sure what it's for, but, but I guess Honda would know. I don't know, but either which way. So what we're gonna do is go with that one. Now after checking my voltage, with my voltage meter, the white wire, which is located there, which you'll see it from the back when you peel the wire away, and the green one is ground. The other one is not ground. This one, for some reason, doesn't do anything. I don't see any ground or what. I don't know if maybe it's wired or something that, maybe the brake lights, I'm not really sure. I, I, that's the only thing I really didn't do is hit the brakes and check it. So either which way, this one's not not wired for anything. I'm sure which one is anyway. So staying on track here. The white one is 12 volt power. The green one is ground. So what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do, now you can buy the adapter piece. This was the cover that went over that. And you can buy the piece like I started to do. Those are little rubber pieces that come out. Now you can buy the, the little ends that go in that, run that straight in and hook it up. And that would be the optimal idea because as you can see inside there, the little black plastic, that will keep water and debris and things out so you don't have to worry about getting those inside your connector if that's the route you want to go another good uh, uh another reason why i would consider optimal is that this piece right here once it goes over that plug there it actually this piece right here on the side of this piece right there it actually slides back inside here and it'll hold it up i'm still going to use that to hold that piece i'm worried about bouncing around and things but what, what I've decided to do, instead of buying that adapter and having to wait since I'm already at this project here, I'm going to pull this off. What I've done was I took this and I cut it. So I cut this up right here down, just trimmed it down. So give me some opening. What I'm going to do now, peel this back here, and I'm going to... I'm, I'm actually going to leave this on here, and I'll explain why later. So I'm going to cut that off, and what I'm going to do is this white wire. I'm going to cut it back far enough to where in the future, if I want, I can splice it back together. And if not, I don't have to. So I'm going to cut this right here, and then I'll come back when I got it connected. All right, so, the, so what I've done was I just pulled this, this uh, uh, wire loom, I guess you'd call it, pulled it back. I trimmed these, uh, the green and white wire, the white being the hot. You make sure you double check it before you crimp it, uh, just to be safe. Do that on all your wires, not just this one, this project specific. I took the wires that come with the kit, run it right here, run it down, and all I done was run it down and over top of the things that were there. So that way I don't worry about it running in. Uh, there is plastic down in here, but it won't bump it in, so I'll run that down, and I'm just going right here, and I'm going to hook it up. And connect it. Uh, no, I went with the connectors that are like this. Simple purpose is I got the heat shrink built on it. So after I connect this one, I'm going to use the same kind and connect the, the ground. Once I do that, I'll be able to hit this with a heat with a, a torch or a heat gun. And this will shrink up and go all the way around the wire. And I'll show you what that looks like, which I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you already know what it looks like. But if not, I'll show you. Uh, I wish I could record it as I did some of this work, but I, I, unfortunately, I just use my phone typically to record it. I don't have a stand. 
Uh, one thing I've noticed on a lot of videos that I watch on here doing stuff is I really hate when the camera and stuff shaking and you can't see nothing. They're going like this around and this and that and you can't see. So I try to hold it a little still so you guys get an idea. As you can see here, the orange and I believe that's red, just a little dirty. The orange wire, the white wire with the orange on it, and then it looks like, like a faded red and a dark red. That's a two-tone colored wire right here. Those wires are not being, I'm not using either one of these two for anything, just the white, uh, the white with the black stripe and the green one. The green one's ground, the white one is keyed power. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I would advise you if you're doing it, now if you wanna strip this all the way back here, you can, you don't have to, but if you wanna strip this this wire loom, it's factory wire loom all the way back, it'll be out of your way, that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, if you want to strip that back, you can. If you was to, you wouldn't have to do uh, what I'm going to do now is heat this so this will shrink together. And so that way I know it's going to hold the wire good. I don't worry about hopefully water and things getting in it. Um, the other thing is if you, uh, I would advise you if you're going to do it like I'm doing this installation, doing uh, this one with this kind of uh, butt connector. I would advise you to do that now because as you can see, there's not a lot of room. You get both of them in there, you might not be able to heat up all the way around each one of these sides of this connector here. So if I was you, I'd urge you to go ahead and heat shrink one, and then install the other one, then heat shrink it. So that way, better optimal uh, divined type seal on this. So I got this thing buttoned up. Even though I shrank it together, I also put tape around it just for good measure. I don't worry about bouncing around, maybe pulling on the wires already there. Pulled the original loom over top of it, then I taped over top of it. I hung that back up there. These wires, are, I'm going to show you next how, I went, how I'm going to go about drilling this hole. Anyway, I plugged this up and I checked it with my air compressor and it's getting key power. So next thing we got to do is we're going to locate this... Um, actual plug inside this piece right here. I tried to find an inch and sixteenth bit and maybe even a step bit would be ideal. But in a pinch, local O's on forty two dollars for a well yeah forty two dollars for a step bit big enough and I'm not getting forty two dollars because I won't ever in my life I can imagine need a hole this big. So what I instead I went and bought was a spade bit which looks like this and the size they have was an inch and eight. So now what you want to do is you want to find your center of this. Now I can clean this off, measure this, and mark it. But if you look really close right here on this, you can see this little spot that goes over where the plug's supposed to go from the factory. So what I'm going to do is try to find about the middle of that somewhere. And I figured I'd put it a little higher so that way in case water was to splash up on here and end here. It's not going to get up into that plug, so I'm going to set it a little higher, try to get it a little higher up right here, and then what I'm going to do is set this on there, and I'm going to drill me a hole in this bit right here. Just like that, because of the hole, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, basically just peel this off, take a scraper, Go over the front of this thing here, so that way it looks nice and clean. Kind of looking, I guess on a ATV it don't matter. Pop this thing out, go over it, get it all clean, pick your shavings up, then we'll run that piece in there and tighten it up. Now I got that cleaned off enough, so ain't pieces laying everywhere. I'm gonna vacuum this right here up, that piece there I missed. Let's plug in at an inch and eight. Right in there, just like that. Now all I gotta do is go back, take this nut, and tighten her down. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. These wires right here, feed them back in through here, plug them up, look for his connector in case she wasn't aware. It's got positive and negative, so you know where the red and black wire goes. In my case, red's positive, black's uh, negative. Pull them wires through here, connect them with this plug right here, and slide it in. Make sure. You run this over these wires, slide the wires out, plug it up, and then push it back through and tighten it up. Another thing, in case this feels a little loose to you and you a little tired of what it is, you can always take and get you some Teflon tape and go around there a couple of times so that way when you tighten this nut, plastic nut up, it'll be it'll fit tighter. 
Okay, now you can see I got to sit up around through here like this. Next thing you want to do for sure is find something that's 12 volts, a plug that'll fit there. Pop this cover off. As you know, you sure don't want to mount something that not work. Pop that cover off. Plug this in. Turn the key on. Keys on. Now make sure that whatever it is you're powering comes on. Put the light on, gauge, and turn the key off, it should go off. When you do that, another thing you want to do is, while well, you got this turned on like this and you can see it, you want to wiggle this. And make sure these plug-ins, make sure they ain't something that's just barely loose. Don't pull it, just wiggle a little bit and make sure. And we're going to slide it in, slide it in there and tighten it up. All right, so don't do this backwards. You want, while these wires are pulled over the top, not through the hole, you want to slide this nut on here. Drop it down in there. Pull these wires through this hole right here. Now, if you look back in there, right there, you can see the rings in the back. Put this on here. Make sure that you plug this thing right here up to something and make sure it works. Sure, want to plug it in and stop. I was oh shoot, something don't work. Another thing I realized after fitting this a couple times, this was loose. So we're done. This and come with plastic covers over it. If you use regular uh, ends, then it might not have plastic over it. Either way, on this application, pulled this back, and all I done was just grab those right there and just pinched it just a little bit, so that way it's good and tight. So we're about to come and loose. It's important you don't want that bouncing around and coming loose, because this is a uh, you know, um, an ATV, so it, it's not going to be on the pavement, so it's going to be bouncy, rocky, jumping around. Don't want something like that coming loose, especially a positive if that comes off and it hits the frame or something other, or a ground spot in there, then it'll ground out, and we don't want that. So we're going to plug this up to our pump, key on, works, key off goes out. So that's good. Now we're going to stick it in there and tighten it up. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is mounted. Good and tight. Like I said, in the event that ain't any good, put your little Teflon tape on it. you make it tighter. I think I'll run it like this until then. Unplug it. Turn the key on. Plug this up. We got power. I'm going to turn the key off. No power. And that's how you install a switch. Well, how you install a, a 12 volt uh, lighter source, cigarette lighter source plug in on a 2019 uh, Honda Rancher. Hope the video is helpful. If it is, I really appreciate it. If you guys want to share feedback, something I did wrong, or you don't like my rambling, let me know. I just want to post a video. I haven't posted one in a while. So a lot of uh, other upgrades that will be coming with this and videos i'll make sure i post them up so y'all can see them so y'all have any questions or anything about this let me know and anything else i get into i'll make sure that i, I post a video of it so that way you guys are informed so remember remember everybody you can do things a lot of ways but you know like i always tell you your rig your car